Four things I loved about the Under Armour Project Rock 2 training shoe. Number one, I love that Under Armour put their hover midsole into this model. It makes it super accommodating for multiple activities. So whether you're running, wearing these on a day to day, or just going for your light recreational lift, these shoes are pretty good at matching the needs. Second, I like that they reworked the outer construction. It feels a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more accommodating in terms of overall durability. So if you're looking for a more durable model, I think the Project Rock 2 is a step in the right direction. My third pro is the increased heel counter and decreased booty. So the booty was a little bit higher on the original Project Rock 1 and it felt fine and it fit fine, but I kind of like a lower booty just because you can use it for a little bit more and it feels a little bit more comfortable, especially when wearing lower socks. So having that booty design plus this increased heel counter gives you a really supportive heel in this model, which I think the Project Rock 1 was kind of lacking at times. My final pro with this model is the Under Armour Tri-Base outsole. So they integrated this outsole that they also used in like, let's say the Tri-Base Rain into the Project Rock 2. And I think that's awesome for just overall support under movements. So not only do you have the hover midsole, but you have the Tri-Base outsole. So whether you need to lift, run, or just wear these on a day-to-day -day basis, I think the combination of all those construction traits make the shoe a pretty solid option. Two potential cons I could see folks having with the Project Rock 2 are number one, the price. This model comes in at $140. Now this is a signature shoe and it's brand new, so you can expect to pay a little bit more. If you're looking for a more cost efficient model and you're looking for, let's say the Project Rock model for that matter, I would say check out the Project Rock 1. It should have a decrease on its price since this shoe is now fresh on the market. My second con is the overall booty construction. Now personally, I like it, but if you're somebody who doesn't like a booty shoe that kind of fits like a size and you don't really like feeling that kind of limitation in terms of not having a tongue, then I could see you potentially having an issue with this shoe. Overall, those are my two potential cons. I think this is a pretty solid shoe and a step in the right direction compared to the previous Project Rock 1. So as mentioned before, the price for this model comes out to $140. So now, is that price worth it and is it justified by the shoe's construction? Personally, I say yes. Compared to the Project Rock 1, I think the shoe is pretty phenomenal in terms of overall performance. Under Armour, I think, took a lot of the user feedback from the previous model and integrated a lot of their signature shoe technologies into this shoe, like their hover technology, the tri-base, and so forth, and an added heel counter for that matter. So in terms of overall performance, I think this shoe is pretty great in terms of stepping in the right direction from the previous model. Plus, it has that signature The Rock spin. So if you like Dwayne The Rock Johnson and you want his signature model, then I think the shoe's price could be justified. Obviously, if you're just looking for your just run-of-the-mill training shoe, then 140 is a little bit much, and especially if you're just looking for that kind of cost-efficient model. But if you're a Rock fan, I would say that the price is justified because this shoe's construction has a lot of updates in the right direction. The overall performance of this model I think is pretty great compared to the Project Rock 1. So I broke this performance recap into three different sections. Number one, day-to-day -day settings. How did this shoe work? Personally, I think it was way more comfortable than the Project Rock 1. The hover midsole makes it super comfortable to stand and walk for long durations. In terms of your more cardio-based, jump-based workouts and like let's say more class workouts, this shoe I think again is fitting the bill pretty dang well. The hover midsole, tri-base rain outsole, and increased heel counter give this shoe a very supportive but accommodating feeling so it's very responsive but also offers support in your more lightweight movements. In the gym, how does this shoe perform? Would I use it for max squats and deadlifts? No. There's an eight millimeter heel to toe offset, so it does set you up a little bit higher, but I think just for your more recreational lifts, so your more bodybuilding style workouts, think like what The Rock does in the gym, I think these shoes do pretty well. They're supportive, they're pretty comfortable, and they can hold weight. But again, I would not use them for max out sets or max out days. I would wear them for your more submaximal days or just more recreational lift at the gym. So now let's dive into the sizing and fit of this model. I'm a size 10, this is a size 10 shoe. In all of our cross trainers, I wear a size 10. One thing to note before even putting the shoe on, in the Project Rock 1, I thought the toe box was a little bit big in it, so I'm curious to see how the two fits. So as you can see, we have four eyelets going up, or like four places where the eyes go through here. Then we have a fifth eyelet back here, and that's kind of like the way that this shoe uses like a lace locking system to it. So I'm just gonna use the first four, lace up the shoe, tight and see how it fits. So one thing I will note is I like how the shoe's toe box doesn't really bunch when it's pulled tight. Like there's not a lot of overlap and I think that's pretty cool, especially for being a booty style shoe. So now where is my foot fitting? Personally, I think this is a pretty snug fit. I have maybe less than a half inch up here. So honestly, I think even going up a half size might be a little bit more comfortable just for overall comfort, especially if you're wearing it on a day-to-day -day basis or jumping a lot. You don't want a lot of toe bunching up there. 
Granted, it is a booty style shoe, so it does have a little bit of give to it. If you go true to size, I would say be a little bit wary. You're probably safe if you err on the smaller size of your normal shoe size, but if you're pushing the boundaries on your true to size shoe, go up a half size just to be a little bit safe. You can always pull the knitting a little bit tighter with the five eyelets going up. In terms of toe splay, I'm splaying my toes. I don't feel any limitations. Again, the nice mesh toe has a bit of give to it, so it's flexible and accommodating, so I don't feel limited. The increased heel counter resists any form of heel slip. It doesn't really pull off easy, which is a great sign, especially for a booty model. So again, to summarize my overall sizing and fit recommendations, if you're airing on the smaller size of your true to size shoe, you're probably safe going true to size with this model. If you're airing on this larger side, go up a half size just to be safe. So now let's cover the full construction of the Project Rock 2. I have the Project Rock 1 here, just for some context, because I do mention a lot in this video that I think the shoe is a better built shoe. So now let's start up here on the toe. So we have an increased mesh material up here. It's definitely not as flimsy as the Project Rock 1. So as you can see in this shoe, there's a lot more give and stretch to this model. This model has a bit more of like a breathable mesh, and I think that's a good sign for durability, but just overall fit and feeling. It's a lot more snug and supportive than the previous model. We have an extra layer of material up here for durability, so kind of to resist any form of toe dragging movements on the big side, or the me medial side, big side toe. Up here on the front, we have an outsole that wraps up. We have an extended layer here. It's not really in a lip function, so that's pretty great for resisting any form of lipping when doing toe dragging. Making our way to the midfoot, we have the hover midsole, that you can see goes all the way around through the midfoot. We have an anatomical, like kind of built out extra construction through the midfoot on the lateral and medial side. It's a little bit more stiff than the previous model. This model has a lot more give to it and kind of just all around is a little bit more flexible compared to this shoe that's a little bit more supportive and a little bit more stiff. We have four places that have eyelets coming out. Obviously, each of these little eyelets are individual, but since there's only one really pull from each side, I'll call it four eyelets, and we have a fifth eyelet up here that you can kind of use for like kind of that lace lock feature. Making our way to the booty itself, it sits a lot lower than the previous Project Rock 1, as you can see, and the material up here towards the top is a little bit more reinforced. Me, personally, I think that's a great sign for durability, and it honestly feels a bit more comfortable than the Project Rock 1. We have an increased heel counter out here on the outskirt of the shoe. It comes up just above like that kind of calcaneous or heel portion on the foot. And I think that's a cool sign for just overall support. As you can see in the Project Rock 1, that sits a lot lower. Was it not supportive? Not necessarily, but it wasn't as supportive as this shoe's heel counter is. We have an extra little bit of support down here on the outsole heel offers a little bit more of a support and locked in feeling. As mentioned in the performance section, this shoe does have an eight millimeter heel to toe drop. And then turning over to the outsole, we have the tri-base feature on the outsole through the midfoot. That's really great for grabbing the ground and giving you that strong tripod foot positioning. And then up here on the midfoot towards the toe, we have a little bit more of a flex to it. So the shoe is a little bit more accommodating for your more like, let's say versatile workouts where you're jumping, running, and then going to lift. So you have the tri-base in the midfoot and a little bit more of a textured rubber heel back here for support. And then a little bit more of an accommodating, maneuverable and flexible toe and forefoot. So all in all, I think those are the major construction updates worth noting in this model. Pretty much everything got an upgrade, and I think that's really cool that Under Armour is starting to use some of their more signature features in their other training shoes in this model because it shows that they care enough to update the shoe to accommodate for other trends in their training shoes. So all in all, I'm a fan of the Project Rock 2. I think Under Armour did a lot of great updates to this model. To wrap up this review, if we look at both of the Project Rock models, I think the two is a step in the right direction. And if you want to read my full thoughts on the construction, overall performance, price and everything that goes into this model, check out our full review in Google Barbin and Project Rock 2.